Hi, welcome to another week in our Bootstrap World um, programming training. Let's look at where we um, have been. So last week um, we talked about uh, defining variables both in racket code, like this example here, and how variable definitions look in algebra. You also learned about using definitions to add images to a video game. You also learned how to define functions using steps known as the design recipe, which is a powerful tool for defining functions based on word problems. The design recipe has three steps, or has these, has these steps. Writing the contract, and you remember that the contract gives the name, the um, types, the data types of the input, which is the domain of the function, and the data type of the output, which is the range of the function. And then step two of the design recipe is to give examples and more than one, so to give multiple examples um, that show how your new GT, in this case, function is going to be used. And then to define the function. So in between here, we notice the things that change in our examples. So when we write good examples, we see ah, the thing that changes between this one and this one is this number here, and that represents the size of the triangle. And so we make a variable called size and use that in the definition of the function. So um, well, we're going to learn more about applying the design recipe today. So functions are, are a key part of animation in computer programs. A function that draws a, a static picture of a cat can place the cat at different locations based on the input. When that input changes slightly based on user interaction or time passing, then the cat can appear to move. And you, you've learned about animation before, kind of the way um, a flipbook animation works, if you know that. Um, but when you put everything together, then you can look like the rocket is blasting off. So let's look at just a little example of that. So here's a picture, and it's changing, even showing how the function changes. So at height zero, it's seven times, so it moves to seven times the number uh, that uh, that is the number of seconds that time passes. And of course, it re it starts over, and that makes it look like the rocket's moving. Of course. So turn to page twelve in your work workbook, and we're going to work through that word problem on that page. So pause for a second and turn to page 12. Okay, so your page 12 uh, looks like that. All right, and so we're going to work together through these different different parts. So here's the problem that's on that page. A rocket blasts off traveling at 7 meters per second. Write a function called rocket height that takes in the number of seconds that have passed since the rocket took off and which produces the height of the rocket at that time. So we're going to think about some of these questions. And we're, going to, we're going to work through together that, um, that word problem. So think about what is the height, the rocket height function taking in as input? What type of data is that? What is the function producing as output? What type of data is that? So what are the three parts of a contract? Remember we talked about that. And those are name, domain, and range. So what is the name of the function you're asked to define? So that's up here. What is the domain? I think you can figure that out. So what, what goes into the function and what is the range? So back on, so on your, your workbook, um, right here in the top part, with the function name, domain, and range, so the contract part. Go ahead and write those things in. Um, so pause now and write in the name of the function, the domain, which is what type of data goes in, and the range, which is what type of data comes out. So take a couple of minutes and write that into your workbook. Okay. Let's keep going. All right, so we're one new thing we're going to learn about today is the purpose statement. So the contract is a way of thinking about a function in a general way, 
without having to worry about exactly how it would work or what how it would be used, right? Like when we wrote the contract about this, we we you know you wrote that um, the name was Rocket Height, and it takes in the number of seconds, so it's just a number. Right, and that's all you would put down in the contract is a number, and produces the height of the rocket, which is also a number. So the contract is a really general statement about what's going on. Um, but starting with and starting with with simple questions like that makes later steps easier to think about. That's the great thing about this design process is um, even in a complex problem, the next step should be. Um, clear of what to do, and it's pretty simple. So the first step is to was to write the name, and then to say it takes in a number and it produces a number, and then move on. So, um, but the contract doesn't have very much information. So um, we a lot of times we need other information. So if we're if the, the domain is a star, then that function needs a number and two strings, but it doesn't say that the string has to be solid or outline and that the one of the strings has to be a color. So to add that information, we're going to write a purpose statement. So hopefully your um in your notebook, this is what your contract looks like, the name rocket height and a number for the domain, and a number for the range. And then right under that in the in your workbook, so right here, the second part is the purpose statement. And here's the purpose statement that they gave us for the um, our example problem. Multiply the number of seconds by 7 to find the height. So we're going to have a lot of practice writing purpose statements. Here, see how it is um, a summary of the the problem that they gave us, but it gives us the exact thing that's needed um, for us to write the um, to write our examples. So multiply the number of seconds by seven. So that tells us what our function is going to do, and it also tells us what the range. You know, more information about the range. So this number that comes out is the height, and the number that goes in is the number of seconds and what our function needs to do is multiply that input by seven. So a purpose statement leads to examples. Armed with the contract and purpose statement, it becomes easy to write our examples. Every example begins with the name of the function and a sample input, both of which are written in the contract. So the contract leads right into the examples. In this case, you know that the function is called rocket height and that it expects a single number as input. The, pur the, the purpose statement goes further, telling you that the input is multiplied by 7. So we can write two examples with different numbers of seconds as inputs. So here's our examples. So here, here's the, and we keep adding to this, so here's the contract. Here's our purpose statement, and now here are two examples. And just as an example, as we're going to get, um, we might have longer and longer lines. Um, you can see that in this example, I put a, a carriage return and put it onto two lines. But the great thing about the, our student language is you can always tell because of the parentheses um, of where things start and end. So you can tell that this goes with these two lines go together because that's where the parentheses match up. So here's an example. We have rocket height, which is the name of our function. It takes in a number, which is going to be the number of seconds. It's going to multiply our number of seconds by 7. And that's what's going to be the height. And that's going to, so it's the last, this is the last statement, this is multiplication. So that's what's going to be returned by the function. That's what's going to be the answer of the example. All right. So in your workbook, write two new examples of rocket height using different values for the number of seconds. Both examples will have a lot in common, so they'll look a lot alike. Um, but once you're done writing them, circle the parts that are changeable. So I'll leave these examples up there. And there's probably enough room in your, you know, in your examples, you can put them all in one line. 
uh, but kind of use these examples as a model. And you want different examples, uh, but there, there also should be examples of how this rocket height function should work. So go ahead right now and pause and write those two examples. Okay, great. And don't forget to circle the parts that changed in those two examples. So by comparing two different examples, you, it's easy to tell what changes. According to the purpose statement, it is the number of seconds that your rocket has been flying. Right? So that's hopefully what you circled. The, the, the two items that you circled um, represent the number of seconds. So actually, on your uh, paper, go ahead, the, the, the numbers that you circled, just write in seconds because that's what it's going to, um, that's what that no, those, those numbers represent. So labeling what is changeable gives programmers a sense of the function of the names of the function's variables. And if you think about what variable means, right, it varies, and vary means change. So, you know, so the things that change in our examples let us know what our variables are. And variables, like you know, are placeholders for values that can be different at different times. So if we have an example of a function that computed how much you pay for text messages each month, you might have a variable for the number of messages. So if you paid per text message, then like a five cents per text message, then the variable would be how many text messages you sent. So how many variables does rocket height have? What's the name of each variable? So now it's time to define that we have everything that we need. And, and so the variable, the, the rocket height had one variable, which is the number of seconds. So let's go ahead now and define our function. So we've got our contract. We now have a purpose statement. We have two examples. And we can see that this changed and this changed, and that represents the number of seconds. So now, to make our function definition, we replace example with define. We have the name of the function. And now, instead of a number, we're having the, a variable seconds that's going to represent the number coming in. And then we're going to multiply that variable seconds by 7. So the design recipe allows a programmer to focus on one step of the problem at a time and use the previous steps to help complete the next one. So in your video notebook for uh, week four, which is what we're on now for week four, um, pause and look at these things and just write one or two sentences about each of these questions. So pause now and do that. Great. All right, you may have noticed that um, the examples for rocket height wrote out the multiplication as multiply 11 by 7. Let's go look at those examples. Right, so it actually wrote out the multiplication instead of just saying 77. Right, and we, we know that from our substitution that if that this is 77, and I don't even know what that is, some bigger number. Right, but we could have put the number in there. Instead, they wrote out the actual calculation. So why is that? Let's um let's look and, and see how that kind of coding um, actually helps us. So let's go into um, Dr. Racket. Open this other. All right, and Dr. Rocket, I'm going under File, Open. And then um, we want to look in that same folder. So on yours, find the folder BS. It's under your, your programming folders. And then Resources, Source Files, Rocket. Um, if you have trouble finding that, let me know. I'll help you find it. All right, so here's... Um, pretty much what we saw. Here's uh, the contract. Here's the purpose statement. And here's the example 
but it, it instead of having it multiplied out, or instead of having um, it stated like this, it's got it just a number. Um, so let's run this. So I can hit the space bar to, to change the number of seconds. All right, so there's one second, and see one second has passed. But nothing is changing. So I'm going to close that. And kind of the way they have this example written out, it's hard to see where the problem is. But if we use this example where we actually write out and there's nothing, I mean, this is actually not wrong, right? Example, rocket height at zero, that's correct. At zero seconds, the height is zero. But let's put in a couple of new of other ones. Let's go in and put in, we don't want to, I don't want to go that many seconds. So let's do um, four and six. So after four seconds and after six seconds. But instead of calculating it out myself, I want to actually put in, so after four seconds, it's going to be four, which is the number of seconds, times seven. And after six seconds, it's going to be six times that number, or it's times seven, it's the number of seconds. Now it's easier to see what is wrong with this one. So even though it passed the, it passed the test, right, because they only had one example, and this passed. Unfortunately, um, the body of it is wrong. Now that this body is written out, it's easier to see. Let's make it multiply the number of seconds times 7. So this format of the example made it much easier to see the problem with this um, body. So now let's hit Run. All right, I'm going to hit the space bar. Ah, so now after one second, it went seven meters. I can keep hitting the space bar, and it's going to keep going up. Obviously, we can make it up go faster by, instead of seven, we can change that number to something else. All right, so now all three of my tests pass, and um, and my, my the more tests I have, the more I can be confident that my um, program works right. So why don't you pause the video here and um, open up that rocket rocket file and um, fix it so that uh, it looks so that it works. And uh, don't use my examples. Use some different examples um, that you have in here for for yours. Use some different examples. Um, so pause and do that. So if you do it now, if you can't find the source file, then find me right now. As long as I'm not in a meeting or something, I'll help you find it. All right, good. Hopefully you have a working rocket program now. All right, and so now we, we kind of learned about all that. We saw the, we, we did the exercise. Um, and, and the, these these point out the same problems that I did, that we don't want to just write the answer in the example. In the example, we want to actually write out um, how to arrive at the answer, so that way it makes it much easier, like we saw here. You know, if we write out the calculation instead of the example, it makes it much easier to write the, write cal the correct calculation in our function definition. So that's it for today. Um, next time, we'll get more practice on following the steps of the design recipe. We kind of went out, we went through um, one one problem today and um, um, together, and next time we'll, we'll get more practice using the design recipe to write programs that solve the given problem.